Okay, so like I said in previous videos, my second grade year was kind of like a replay of my first grade year. And during the summer of my first grade year, I did go to Bible school at my grandmother's and I did enjoy being at my grandmother's and I enjoyed my aunt. My first grade year, I got my first Bible and that summer, the summer before second grade, I got my first Bible and it was a Psalms, Proverbs, New Testament Bible. And um, that's whenever I began reading the Bible. And that's the first Bible that I read from front to back. And of course, it started with Psalms and went into Proverbs. And I loved Proverbs. I've loved Proverbs my whole life. So as a small child, you know, six, seven years old, I was reading the small little Bibles. And I I did. I began to bring it with me everywhere. And second grade year, again, I stayed behind at my dad's to be with my sister. And again, it did not work out. Um, and this time I stayed a little bit longer, though. This time I stayed for about a month. But still, my mom called and I was like, I miss you, mommy. I don't know where it came from, but I did. And so I went back to New Mexico. And again, in New Mexico, I was walking to school all by my lonesome, and I felt like a big girl now. I remember my cousins, my mom's sister, they must have lived right down the street for a small little bit, because I remember walking to my cousin's house and him being upside down on, because he's just one year, well, he's six months older than me, really. And he was upside down on a chair and I was like, what are you doing? And it was like, got me interested in being upside down on a chair. My second grade year, I was very independent, you know, and it's not that I wanted to be independent. It's that I was independent. Um, I remember the people that lived right across the street from me. There was a little girl that was a little bit younger than me. She was a toddler and there was a girl that was older than me. And so I loved playing with them. The older girl liked playing with me and I loved playing with the toddler. And they wanted me to go to the movies with them and they wanted me to see Terminator 2 in the theater with them. At this girl, the older girl, but she, she was like lying to her parents that were telling them that we were going to go see a different movie. And she told me to lie to my mom. And it just, I felt so bad about lying to her. And, but I did, I lied to her and said that we were going to see, I don't know, I think it's Annie or something like that. But we went and saw Terminator 2. When I got home, my mom asked me, so how was the movie? And I just broke down crying. <laughs> and I told her that I, I saw Terminator 2 and it was a good movie. You know, and I, I remember my little kid heart seeing that scene of the burn up, man, that like imprinted on my head for some reason. I think because of my young age of seeing the movie, because I think that your first seven years are really setting up your life. And here I am at six, seven and seeing this Terminator movie and I don't know but I you know I broke down to my mom and she's like oh I didn't care you could have told me you were going to see that movie I, I would have been fine and I was like oh okay so it wasn't a big deal I didn't even have to lie to my mom so that was kind of cool to figure out and learn yeah my second grade year was a lot of fun, I think, you know, I had friends, I was in the Girl Scouts, um, I was very independent, um, when the girl right across the road couldn't play, I would walk a couple houses down, and there were two girls, and they weren't ever allowed to leave their house, but I was always, like, all around the neighborhood, you know, like, there was an old lady who, she had grapes in her yard, and I would just be like, can I pick some grapes, please, and she was like, yes, come in, pick some grapes, you know, my brother was, he's four years younger than me, so six, five, four, three, two, he was two, and he was starting preschool, and he falls in love with the little girl at preschool, and it was so sweet watching him and her they were so cute, and um, I don't know, I just, my second grade year, I think, was a really good year. There weren't a lot of traumas happening yet. <laughs>
But I do remember the next summer, um, the second grade summer, going to my grandmother's house and um, just the the back and forth of it all, you know, like at, at my mom's, I'm like uber independent, but at my grandma's, I'm, I'm the protected one like that kid. And then at my dad's, it's just fun and chaos kind of, you know, but it, it's fun, but sometimes it's chaos, you know, sometimes it's fun. Sometimes you're getting yelled at and you don't know why. And it's just like, it's crazy. And the rules at my dad's were just completely different than my rules, rules at my mom's. The way that my mom wanted you to handle going to the bathroom was totally different than how my dad and stepmom wanted you to handle going to the bathroom. And it just, I think that it all began to get to me. I think that whenever you get into a comfortable spot, then you can kind of let out all the angst and everything. And I think that's what happened. Um, I had my first mental breakdown the summer of my second grade. I was seven years old. I was seven years old that summer and I had my first mental breakdown and I do remember it. And it was like, it was kind of an ongoing and it was at my grandma's with my aunt. And, you know, I love her so much. And she, she was like the mom I never had. She took me to doctor's appointments and stuff. And I don't know, she really was amazing. And I, I wanted her to be my mom. I desperately wanted her to be my mom. And I think just the way that she loved me and bought me nice clothes and did help me do my hair and, you know, all that stuff. Cause she would help me wash my hair. Whereas at my mom's, my hair was just wild because I was a wild child and, you know, kind of left to my own. I, yeah, I had my first mental breakdown very much. So, um, I, I just, I remember just kicking, screaming on the floor, kicking, screaming. I, I do, I remember it. And I remember how she handled it with such love and grace, you know, it was amazing. And she, I remember she was just like, oh, wow, you know, it must be hard for you. And she just, you know, continued on and she, I think she did the dishes or something. And, and I, I, I flailed and kicked and screamed and cried until I couldn't no more. And I remember thinking, why am I kicking and screaming and crying to my Aunt Janet? Like, why am I doing that to her? She loves me and she's, you know, done nothing but good to me. And I don't kick and scream with my mom like this. So why am I doing this with her? I don't even know if I did that with my mom or not, but I remember thinking this, and I just, I decided, I was like, no, I'm not going to be that way with her, and it's like, I don't know, it was like my first epiphany moment, it, it was my first breakdown, breakthrough moment of my life, and I know I was seven years old, and it really did, it changed how I saw the world. I began to see the world in a new light, and I don't know, um, I, I then, you know, I, I started making competitions out of things as a kid, like, little crazy things, like, my aunt would go shopping every Saturday, we would go shopping with my great-grandma, my grandma, and my aunt, and every time I would want to get a bouncy ball out of the machine, and I would do, like, competitions with myself where I would throw the bouncy ball down the hall and have to like run and catch it and then throw it down the hall and run and catch it again. Um, I had a competition for, I had to be the first one with my seatbelt on. I needed to be in the car with my seatbelt on before anyone else. And I needed to have my seatbelt off and out of the car before anyone else at the store, you know, ready to go in the store. <laughs> yeah. And at the store, I was always allowed to go to the magazine racks, and I always enjoyed doing that. And um, I don't know, it really was an epiphany moment for me at seven years old. It was a whole new life change for me, and very interesting. And then I remember that Christmas, my mom took me, she had friends in a rodeo, and um, we went to rodeos and we went to their house after Christmas and my friend had um, the new Beauty and the Beast movie and oh my gosh, I was so in love with it and watching that and her daughter was a teenager and she was, you know, older and 
and she was really cool to me, you know, yeah. of course. And um, my mom went and bought me the Beauty and the Beast um, movie. And I didn't know, but it was a Christmas present. <laughs> and I I saw it in the car. So when my mom went to sleep, I went outside, got in the car, got the movie, and came inside and watched it pretty much all night. I watched it and I colored all night. <laughs> And, and my mom wakes up the next morning I'm still I'm watching it again for like the 15th time and oh goodness she was so angry because I didn't know why she was angry I it was it was confusing to me I actually I think I thought that she was mad because I stayed up all night and I shouldn't have stayed up all night and so she's mad but that's not at all why she was mad she was mad because I got into my Christmas presents early and I was already watching my Christmas present. So that was kind of crazy. Um, so, yeah, that, I mean, those were my younger years. And yeah, I really, I don't. My second grade year, it was like a repeat of my first grade year, but kind of more intense, more in depth. And um, I learned a lot that year. And it was my first real breakdown that came with a breakthrough. I think that I had many breakdowns. I probably, many times that I threw a fit as a kid. And I probably did it at my mom's house and my dad's house. And nobody understood why, but it was because I didn't have any stability. I didn't understand stability. And if the first seven years of your life make you, then I was made in chaos. And I don't know, um, not all trauma. I think that there is a lot of good. Like, I see it as a good story. I don't see it as a traumatic story. Um, losing my grandpa wasn't really a sad experience for me. That was just a weird experience that stands out. And um, the time with the pillow over my head from that my dad's girlfriend at the time who, by the way, is not the same girl that he married. The girl there was not, she's not my stepsister. It's not the same person. And, but, um, yeah, you know, like, just that memory is just so strange that that's in the beginning of my times, you know? But there were and, a lot of good times. There was a lot of good times, you know? I loved my grandma. My grandma loved me. I loved my grandpa. He was so much fun. I loved my great-grandma. <laughs> I loved my aunt. You know, I love my stepsister. Uh, she was a blast. I mean, every time that I got together with her, she's just like, let's play this and so outgoing and fun. And um, yeah, so and I love my little brother. My little brother was so awesome. He was a pretty cool little boy. Oh, and another thing that happened in the in my second grade year in New Mexico at my mom's house, a tornado went through. And it, I remember this because it was so crazy. We put up a, um, we were in the middle of the house. It was a house house and we we're in the middle. We put up a mattress, uh, like diagonal in the hallway. And we were all in the hallway. And my stepdad said, everybody stay here. I'm going to go look. And then my mom said, y'all stay here. I'm going to go look. And then I said, Nathan, stay here. I'm going to go look. And I went and looked. And Nathan told me later on that he had a little teddy bear. And he said, he told his teddy bear, stay here. I'm going to go look. Well, the tornado passed and it did not hit our house, but it did hit the house right across the street from me. And everyone survived. Everyone was okay, but their house was demolished. So the one with the, where I went to see the Terminator, her house got demolished and that was sad. But yeah, and it was crazy because the aftermath of the tornado was crazy. Like I didn't ever see the tornado. I think I heard it. It sounded like, I don't know, like a lot of wind and a train. But um, yeah, it's like it hits this house and skips these and hits this house and skips these and hits this house. It, there's like no rhyme or reason to the aftermath of a tornado. But that was my first experience with the tornado. And that was kind of exciting. So, yeah, there you have it. Second grade, seven years old. 
Moving on.